All right, so you got into Retool after the team had passed its uh, final uh, throws, I guess, of, of existence, and you managed to bring some of your athletes over into your consulting group. And how was, how to talk, talk about the founding of Retool a little bit and, and how those athletes might have played a role, but more importantly, just where did the idea come from? How did you get involved? I think there's probably a lot of people out there who are quite interested in triathlon from a business perspective and, you know, talk about the pros and cons of getting into business as a, as a triathlete. What does it do to your, your sport in general? Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, so it, I think my strength at the time when, um, when we were kind of, when the retool concept was kind of being tossed around was that I had a lot of contacts. I had done a lot of these, um, you know, I'd basically been on the sponsorship side for the altitude company and, and, um, and then, and then with try to buy it kind of, you know, seeing the other side of that. And, and I had, um, actually one of the young engineers that, at, uh, at the altitude company is, um, was the, is the inventor of, of, of retool. Um, he had left, I went to work in Dubai. He went and worked for a surgical navigation company um, that, that basically does robotic surgery. And um, so they make kind of the, uh, the the navigational side of that, the hardware and software. And so um, he was a cyclist. And uh, I remember he came and showed me um, showed me a prototype of, uh, it was called Cycle Path back then. He had kind of branded himself and and he showed me, he showed it to me and I just, it just didn't click. You know, I didn't get it. I didn't know anything about bike fitting. Bike fitting wasn't, uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a topic really back then. I mean, I think there was those forward pioneers, the Serratas and some of those companies that had done it, but it was not near what it is today. Um, and so he had kind of showed me a prototype and, um, you know, I kind of blew them off at first and then, um, you know, circumstances changed. I found myself without a, without a job and, when the team died and, um, you know, we kind of reconnected for, for, a, for a coffee, I think once, and we started talking about the motion capture and, and what bike fit did. And, and there was a, there's a, you know, kind of the godfather of, of, uh, 3d bike fits is happens to be in Boulder here. Uh, Dr. Andy Pruitt at the Boulder center for sports medicine had had a, you know, giant hundred thousand dollar motion capture system that you could, you know, swing golf clubs in and, and pretty much do anything a kind of a university laboratory grade mo mocap system, super expensive and only like a, you know, hospital could afford. And so, you know, we kind of looked at that and, and then uh, my partner, Cliff, um, the inventor of Retool kind of told me, you know, I can basically do the same thing, but we can, you know, just focus on bike fitting in the bike industry, which we had a little bit of experience with. So that's kind of how it was born. Um, and we couldn't really necessarily, um, you know, do it, you know, Cliff is the engineer and, and myself is kind of the business development guy. Um, we couldn't really do it on our own. We needed kind of a guy that understood how to interpret the the data. So we made a trip up to Boulder Center for Sports Medicine and, and we met our third partner, which is his name is Todd Carver. And and Todd was working under Andy Pruitt. He was kind of the biomechanist at the, at the hospital and doing a lot of those bike fits. So he knew 3D, knew the angles, knew kind of the, how to interpret the data. And I run a uh, Boulder Center for Sports Medicine was, um, you know, they had they had really helped pioneer the bike fits uh, school for specialized bicycles, which, you know, was really the leader. It's probably still the leader for any, uh, well, not probably, is definitely the leader for the, you know, kind of by the uh, the manufacturer, the bike manufacturers and bike fit. They had developed the whole school and their BG fit and their um, uh, body geometry um, uh, uh, fit line. And so they were kind of the big, the big dogs back then. And so, you know, Todd had saw an opportunity and it had left uh, Boulder Center for Sports Medicine. We, you know, kind of rebranded the, the cycle path at that point and just called it retool and, and um, yeah, and, and we were off and running. So it took us about three months of kind of getting the house in order, getting a website built. And then um, we had an opportunity to work which, uh, with, with Slipstream Sports, which today is the modern Garmin Sharp team, uh, pro cycling team. And uh, they asked us to come down and, and do some fits. And um, Alan Lim, Dr. Alan Lim was kind of the sports scientist on that team at that point. He saw what we were doing and 
instantly kind of jumped in and wanted to be part of it. So he was kind of the first uh, advisor we had. And um, yeah, that's how it was born. And, and, and I think, you know, when we launched it, like any kind of piece of technology that is kind of on the forefront, um, you have to really kind of create a demand for it. So that's where, you know, people like Crowey and some of the relationships I had in the past, we kind of started bringing those guys in and they really responded well. I mean, they liked seeing the data. They liked being able to be biomechanically optimized on their bike because in, especially in long distance triathlon, it is, it is not like pro cycling, you know, TT specialists where it is all about arrow, all about speed. You have to run when you get off the bike. So it is a, a very much a blend and of performance and comfort when it comes to um, when it comes to bike fit and triathlon. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how it got started. And um, you know, we are we are we are pretty. Um, I'd say we're we're pretty savvy in terms of being able to identify what the athletes' needs are first, and kind of our marketing needs second. And that is that really holds a lot of water and credibility with athletes you know when you when you come in and it's all about the marketing they instantly kind of shy away from really taking your your technology or your knowledge seriously but when you come in and it's all about them and you're really helping them you know uh find comfort find a better joy in their profession which is spending hours and hours and hours on the bike um it's 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 amazing how well they will turn around and support you and we have found that you know, over the years with, you know, with, with, with the teams, with, with the triathletes, with mountain bikes, I mean, just about anybody. So, um, and today, I mean, we've, you know, who's who is coming through the retool doors in terms of in, in long distance triathlon and, and short course. And I think we have six uh, world tour cycling teams now that fully incorporate the technology and we go over every year and help with fits. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great ride. Um, but, but, you know, you mentioned that the business side, I mean, I will say that, in, you know, when you're looking at wanting to work in the bike industry, um, you know, one piece of advice I would say is don't pigeonhole your, your idea or your market into just triathlon or, or just road cycling. If you can get a product or service um, that, you know, encompasses kind of the, the whole industry, you know, mountain bikes, you know, road cycling, triathlon, that's that's really a smart move. Yeah. You know, obviously your market is bigger, but um, you know, they're, they're, while there, there's a lot of crossover, they are kind of very different little sub industries under this greater, you know, bike industry umbrella.